If you are a fan of the AR platform, then I think you're gonna like this, especially if you like something a little bit Gucci, a little bit different, you're gonna like this. Allow me to introduce you to The Fix from Q Rifles. Check that out. They don't come more Gucci than this. I really don't think they do. Really don't think they do. So what have we got here then? Well, this is an AR-10, okay? Because it is chambered in 308. Other calibers are available, including 6.5 Creedmoor, 300 Win, ba 300 win Mag, and 338 Lap Mag. So something for everyone, really. But this little 308, not bad at all, not bad at all. I get that it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, you know. Um, it is very different to a conventional AR, yet all the controls and the ergonomics are pretty much the same. So it's it's almost like it's contradic contradicting itself. But uh, I'll throw out some specs. Uh, let me just grab my tablet with all my information on. So, multi-caliber, like I said, uh, you can change the calibers like a, uh, you know, a multi-caliber uh, rifle, you swap the barrels out. So, so I believe that's standard in the, in the AR, in the AR uh, world. Um, bolt action, it's, bolt action, straight pull, it's, it's classed as a bolt action, but it's almost, it's almost like a straight pull. No, it's a, it's a bolt action because you've got to lift it on you. So, yeah, it's classed as a bolt action. But I don't know, here in the UK, we get a lot of straight pulls where you have to sort of operate it like that. And it is classed as a straight pull. So, I don't know. Make your own mind up. Straight pull, bolt action, whatever. We'll call it a bolt action. Takes a magazine. Um, Accuracy International Style Magazine or AICS Compatible Magazine. Uh, but they are compatible in this rifle. AR-10 magazines, uh, yeah, I think you get it. Is that, that's a Magpul one, so yeah, I'll, I'll show you more about that shortly. Aluminium, it looks like it's almost, uh, it looks like a stainless steel finish, but it is um, a aluminium receiver. What is interesting, and I'll get to that as well in a minute, unlike a conventional AR platform rifle. There's no upper or lower, it's just one piece. So that's very interesting. That's what makes this particular rifle quite Gucci and quite pricey. Again, I'll get I'll get into that in a minute. Um, now, overall weight is six pounds. Okay, this is the 16 inch barrel version, like I said, 762 by 51 308. Um, you've got a 58 by 24 thread, bark line barrel, uh, tooly match chambered. I'm just reading off the uh, off their website. Fully adjustable stock, as you can see, that's pretty much um, pretty much as far as it goes. Lifetime warranty. Let's give you some other um, specs that I cannot find on the website. So overall length is, and the tape will never lie, is uh, 36 inches, okay? 36, 36 inches, that's with this stock wound out. So you probably go a little bit shorter on the length. So what do you guys make of this then? Oh, right, where do I start? Where do I start? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the price of this thing. And I don't usually touch on prices as far as products go because they just get out of date. You know, you could be watching this video in two years time or something and the price would be out of date. Rather than give you a figure um, of how much these cost, uh, four grand. Um, rather than give you a figure, what I am going to say is these things are the same sort of money. Desert Tech. Same sort of money. 
Okay, just saying. So, it depends whether you want a real Gucci bolt action, like, let's, I mean, let's throw out another example, like an Accuracy International, you know, they're almost AR-like, like a bolt action AR. This is a bolt action AR. Would you go Ac Accuracy International? Do you want something that just looks totally bling like this? Or, like I say, do you go for something like Desert Tech if you want a ballpup configuration? The world's your oyster. There's definitely nothing quite like this, though, is there, really? Especially the colorations and this, that, and the other. Right then, so that's the formalities out of the way. Let's take this from the top then. So, the first striking thing about this is this adjustable stock, fully adjustable stock. Now, what I will say is, and I thought this to start with when I first received this rifle, kindly on loan from Edgar Brothers here in the UK. Uh, I thought, hmm, that's possibly going to be a little bit uncomfortable because you see the size of that compared to my hand there. This butt pad or recoil pad, uh, pretty much not a lot of it there, is there? There's definitely no sort of soft rubber to soak up that recoil. I mean, let's just, for example, let's just show you this uh, Desert Tech. Look at the soft rubber there to soak up the recoil. This is 308, you know. Yeah, there ain't a lot on this uh, fix. So I thought, mm, yeah, that's probably going to hurt after, you know, 50 or so rounds, something like that. But pretty comfortable to shoot. I found it was pretty com comfortable to shoot. Other reviewers didn't. So what can I say about that? I don't know, just put a, put a bit of meat on the bone, you know. You won't feel the impact of it so much. Just kidding, just kidding. That'll wind some people up. <laughs> Get in the gym, dude. Put some meat, put some meat on the bone. <laughs> right. So, so there is your uh, fully adjustable, as you can see, your fully adjustable, uh, I'm going to say recoil pad, it ain't a recoil pad, but pad. Not really a pad, is it? Not really a, a pad. No pad there whatsoever, but you can adjust it like this. So you can adjust the height um, of that, this, that, and the other. It is rubberized for what it's worth. Okay, and it's got a Q's logo there. Yeah, not bad. And you've also got a QD uh, mount there. So you can throw on a sling of some description. Ambidextrous as well. That is something I do like about this particular rifle, there is your recoil, uh, your recoil pad, your cheek, cheek pad, okay, so cheek piece, again, uh, polymer, not the comfiest, or at least it doesn't look the comfiest, but it's not bad, I had no problems with it, no problems with it whatsoever, it, it felt all right to shoot, as you can see in the footage, didn't really have a problem with it, yeah, it was a little bit jumpy. I mean, it's 308 at the end of the day. A little bit jumpy, but, you know, it is what it is. Skeletonized stock, again, as you can see. Um, look at the quality of it. Just look at the quality of it. It's like something that it's been, it's like it's been designed and built at NASA, this thing does. Just look at the quality of the engineering of it. The folding stock on this thing, and I'm all sometimes a little bit wary of folding stocks, okay? Because I just think, oh, it's something else to break, something else to go wrong. Let me just get you on camera. But the way this has been made, this folding stock, see how it locks up like so? If I can just get it on camera. They say the more wear that gets, the better it will lock up, okay? My research tells me anyway. That's what my research tells me, clicking around on the internet. Yeah, the more it's used, the better it locks up, and it locks up solid anyway, okay? Moving on to, oh, we'll save the action for a minute. Moving on to the 
pistol grip. Standard AR-15, okay? That that is supplied is just a polymer. It's a Magpul one. Um, yeah, it's all right, but the World Your Oyster AR platform, pistol grip, you can swap it out to whatever you want. So pretty much you're good to go. Controls are pretty much in the usual place as a, a conventional AR platform. So you've got your safety catch, which by the way, is ambidextrous and is really nice. Really nice. It is in the perfect position, okay? Perfect. Even for me being a lefty, you right is, it's in the perfect position, okay? It really is. Magazine release, again, perfect position, bog standard, you know, can you swap them out for conventional? I say conventional, can you swap them out for other AR bits and pieces? I believe you can with the safety catch, although I think the pin that holds it uh, is um, only sort of for the queue, so you, you might struggle it struggle to sort of swap that out, I don't know, from what I've learned. Why you'd need to, I don't know, it does the job. The mag release is, in my eyes, perfect. But this isn't a race gun, is it? It's not something that you're gonna use, well, maybe you will. I mean, is it something you're gonna use at sort of great, I'm trying to word this right, would you use this rifle for a lot of speed shooting? Maybe you would. Maybe this rifle will appeal to the Precision Rifle League guys, you know, who are moving from stage to stage, you know, AR platform, quick to load, um, drop out mags. It's light, it's maneuverable. Maybe so, maybe so. For me, that mag release, the actual button itself, is perfect. It's perfect. You know, each to his own. Yeah, I'd probably have an Ambi one, if I'm honest. But it's not like you're using this thing for sort of a uh, run and gun, mini rifle or anything like that. So, as mentioned, magazine, um, AI CS compatible mags. That there is a um, Gen, th what is it, a Gen M3. Gen Gen, I can't, I can't speak tonight. Gen 3 P Mag, okay, from Magpul. Does the job, does the job. 10 rounder that one is, three away. Or six, five, Creedmoor. They'll take the same. Then, moving on, as you can see, right, let's talk about, let's talk about how this thing works then. So, bolt action, we won't call it straight pull, bolt action, you have to lift this bolt up like that. That's your first stage, okay? And then just slide it back like that. What I am gonna say, guys, that thing is like glass. It is like glass. And it runs on rails, a bit like a pistol slide. So semi-automatic pistol, it runs pretty much the same as that, okay? It is absolutely glorious to load. It is just silky, silky smooth, okay? It really is. That is one of the main things that I noticed about this rifle, okay? It's just silky, silky smooth. It, it is a dream to shoot. I ain't gonna lie, it is a dream to shoot. Now, as I mentioned, like any other AR platform rifle, this one doesn't have an upper and lower. That is a solid milled one piece receiver. And I think that's what makes this thing quite expensive, okay? Because the machining on that is just amazing. It is amazing, the quality of it. Absolutely glorious. If you're new to AR-15s or you don't know what I'm talking about when I say uh, upper and lower, just grab my Smith & Wesson 1522. Okay, so I know it's not 
I eat an AR, but it's not a mil spec AR, okay? Don't get, don't get everyone started. But there's your upper, here's your lower, okay? So that, that's an upper, that's a lower. That's usually what happens when you have an AR platform gun, you have an upper, you have a lower, okay? This one you don't, it is what it is. So, and that, I don't know, possibly is a disadvantage of this rifle because, I mean, would you do that? I, I don't know whether you'd actually, uh, would you do that if this had an upper and lower? Would you, would you buy different uppers, so different calibers? I don't know. I think basically what they've done, um, Q, they've basically, well, it's quite interesting actually, they are color coded. So see this has got blue bits on, that tells you the caliber. So 308, they use a different color for 6.5, uh, Creedmoor, so on and so on. Don't ask me the colors, I don't know, you'd have to go on the website. That is kind of cool. But if you wanted to change calibers with this, uh, I think you're gonna struggle anyway. Just buy the caliber you want, okay? Just buy, you want a multi-caliber rifle, then buy uh, an Accuracy International or buy a Desert Tech, you know, and all the barrels and bits to go with it. But that is your receiver, no upper and no lower, just one piece milled receiver and it is proper high quality. That's what gives this thing its accuracy because there's no play in it, it is just one piece, okay? Free floating barrel, 16 inch barrel, as you can see. Thick tapered profile barrel. I don't know if you can see through the handguard there, it just taper out a little bit. Um, really nice, plenty of Picatinny rail on the top and M-lock, looks like M-locks not put the uh, emblem on the handguard, but that does look M-lock-ish, or M-lock size anyway. Um, so you can throw on um, bits and pieces if you so desire. Do you need anything adding on? No, not really, just a bit. We, and you do get a bit of Picatinny rail with the rifle so you can throw on a bipod, okay? so. Good to go to throw on a bipod. If you are interested, and this is quite interesting, that right there is a cherry bomb. No, not the sort that you had on your car when you was like 17 years old, many years ago, that used to annoy the neighbors. But no, that is a cherry bomb. That's what they're calling it. Is it a muzzle brake? No, not really. It doesn't really act as a muzzle brake. It's more of a loudener, I'll call it a loudener. But with this being an American rifle, okay, with this cherry bomb, basically it can be encapsulated into a, my watch is just bleeping there, sorry, hour, hourly chime. It can be uh, encapsulated into a can, hence the thread on there. But here in the UK, and you Americans that are watching, you like to charge absolutely stupid money for cans, okay? Or moderators, whatever you want to call them, and throw on big tax uh, fees to them and God knows what, because, I don't know, I think it just is to try and put people off buying them, I think, you know, because I don't know, I don't know whether they think they're for like assassins or something. Here in the UK, uh, a moderator or a can is a lot easier to get because it, basically our excuse is uh, we need them for health and safety. You know, protect your hearing basically. But that is the reason why the can for this doesn't come over to the UK, just in case you're wondering, because it's American made, uh, it just costs too much money. Okay, and I have heard that from the importers here in the UK of these rifles, okay? So you get the cherry bomb, or basically the internals of the can, but you don't get the can that goes over it, okay? So what would you do? Would you take that off and just throw on a can if you wanted, or put up with it, or get another type of brake? Well, I'd leave it, you know. Yeah, it's loud. Yeah, it's a short barrel. You do get a bit of a flash out the front, but I don't know, it's, 
if you like me, that all adds to the fun. Whew. Right. <laughs> the trigger, as you can see, the trigger is a straight bladed one and the trigger is glorious. Breaks like what all reviewers say, a glass rod. I've never broke a glass rod. I'll have to do that. Oh, it is really nice. The trigger is really nice. Shall we give it a pull? Of course we're going to give it a pull. This is a rack and load review. Right, and let's give this thing a pull. I'm going to say, I'm going to guess now, I'm going to say three and a half pounds. Straight out of the box, this is... Oh, I'm a little bit out. Okay, so two and a half pounds. Okay, so that's that's a lovely trigger. That is a lovely, lovely trigger. Where can we go after talking about a trigger? Let's just put the mag back in. Accuracy. Now I was using Hornaday tap ammunition. This was supplied with the rifle. Uh, for me to test and review. Did put some other stuff through it, but he seemed to like this stuff. So Hornaday Tap Ammunition, Tactical Police Ammunition. Don't know, bad guys. You don't want to be on the receiving end of that. Trust me. And I got pretty good results, if uh, I do say so myself. 100 yards, no wind. It was a very hot day and I did get this thing hot. It got hot. So, mm, cool down. I was, you know, um, I was a little bit time restricted on other bits and pieces I got on test and I was having to shoot. So we didn't get a great deal of cool down time. But these are my results and this is me shooting guys. As I always say, you lot will do way better than me. But 100 yards, three shot groups. Boom. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit more open, that one is. That one's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's MOA, isn't it? It's sub-MOA. Sub-MOA, when I could say it. Shooting off that bipod. You know, if I'd got my shizzle together, I would have tightened those a bit better. So it's capable of one whole group at 100 yards using this ammunition. Okay. This was, what was it? it was the 100 day tap, 168 grain ELD match ammunition. That is accurate. It's accurate. End of story. What, can, what more can you say? It looks pretty damn sexy. It shoots even better. Okay, accuracy wise, amazing. Really, really good accuracy wise. What's not to like? Um, it's a little bit noisy. And joking aside, this stock, it isn't the most comfortable. It isn't. So myself, if it, I could, I would, I don't know, I'd want to change the stock. I really would. Or I'd want to get a bit more of a uh, user-friendly, let's use that word, a bit more of a user-friendly recall pad just to take the edge off 308. I mean, I put, what, 80 rounds through this thing. It was starting to niggle a little bit. It, it was. It didn't leave me any marks or anything, you know, um, but... It was starting to niggle a little bit, you know, so I'm just going to just going to say that. Let's have a look at the guts of this thing, because this is your field strip. OK, and it is a bit, a bit weird field stripping this thing because there's a little tab where you can see it right there. You push that tab down. OK. And it should it should come out. Like so. There is your bolt. Look at the quality of that. Look at the quality of that thing. Wow. Really, really nice. Really nice. Solid. That is a substantial bolt, okay? 
Remember this. Live free or die. That's New Hampshire's saying apparently. Live free or die. Like it. Um, let's have a look inside there. If you can have, if you can see very well, this is your trigger group. Can you swap the trigger group out to a standard AR? No, you can't. Looking at that, no, you can't. Okay. Why you'd want to swap the trigger out anyway is beyond me because the trigger is just glorious. It really is. Have a look down there. There's the holy bit where the shoot a bit travels. So <laughs> it's definitely different. It's definitely different, isn't it? Look at the quality though, that receiver. Look at it. That is, I know the scope's in the way, sorry. It's just a really well engineered rifle. You cannot lie, even if you don't like the look of it, you cannot lie that this thing is just a glorious, gloriously well-made rifle. It really is. Like I said, not everyone's cup of tea. You know, I think for me, for this to be even better than it is, I would have preferred if they'd just put on a mil spec buffer tube so you could choose or you were supplied with a standard-ish stock. That would transform it. I really do think it, it would. You know, even a black, black stock. Have we got one to hand here? You've got a pretty accurate, accurate a pretty uh, decent stock that would look all right. I don't know if you can visualize that, guys. That's a loose AR. Fully adjustable AR stock. Something like that. I think it'd probably look better. That's just my opinion. Skeleton stocks, I like it. I like it that it's foldable. I get all that. Yeah, it's the folding stock on it. Yeah, that will appeal to people. You have to push down, ugh, fold it like that. It's a nice compact bit of kit, definitely. Throw it in a backpack or small bag, whatever, you know, ideal, ideal. It does keep it lightweight. But I don't know, with that being, feeling that, feeling the actual stock, there's probably a little bit of weight to it, probably no more than like, you know, a polymer stock. So there's probably not a lot of difference in the weight there. I think I would have just done that myself just to make it a bit more appealing, a bit more user-friendly. That's probably my only gripe. Just put, a, just put a mil spec buffer tube on there so people can chop and change the, uh, or upgrade or downgrade or whatever, um, you know, their stocks. With this one, with this folding stock, you're pretty much stuck. You're stuck with it. So, you know, what can I say? If you can get bigger recoil pads, butt pads for it, then yeah, possibly, I don't know, I found it quite comfortable. Possibly a bigger cheek piece, again, that'd be a bonus. You know, it's at the end of the day, it's down to what your preferences are. Let's spin it around, let's have a look at the other side. So, what do you think of this one, guys? Something a little bit different. It certainly is a little bit different. But you cannot deny, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, God, no, oh, hell no. <laughs> Forget it. You cannot deny, I've just buried this target, that it's accurate. It does its job. I had to put three times there, as in three shots in it, because that is a three, three old group. You cannot lie that the thing is accurate. So, it. I personally think it looks good. It shoots well. Uh, but some people still won't like it. But I do. I think it's pretty damn sexy. How could I? How could I? 
Expl how can I summarize this this rifle in a few words? Uh, hmm. I'd say it was pimp to the max. If it's, I was going to say unicorn AR. It is almost a unicorn AR. Dare I say that? And I don't mean that in a bad way. I, I don't. It is just like someone who loves the AR platform but wants a bolt action, has a dream, and this is what they dream about. It's all the Gucciness of Gucci they can find and put it all together. So I, I do like it. I've said that a few times, but I do like it. But there are other options for the sort of price that it is. Hence, one of them. No, not for me. Not for a lefty. Although left hand desert techs are available. Would I get one of these? Would I get an Accuracy International? There's some sexy Accuracy Internationals out now. Definitely. But, don't know. I'll leave that one down to you. Let me know in the comments what you think about this one. I think this will be quite an interesting talking point. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. That is your rack and load review of the fix from Q Rifles. Thanks for watching. Stay subbed. See ya.